Thank you very much for joining today's online event about process bus virtualization and how to benefit from it, especially in digital substations. I'm here today together with Edwin from Locomation, who is an expert on IC 61850. And I'm yours, CTO and Managing Director at Velotech. Before we start, um, the presentation will be around 30 minutes and you can ask questions at any time. So if you have um, some questions regarding some slide, please use the Q&A section within the Zoom app to ask your question and we'll take enough time at the end to answer all your questions. Regarding the agenda of, of today, we talk a little bit about the challenges of DSOs and TSOs, um, look into traditional um, IDs and merging units uh, versus the, well, let's call it visualized solution, solution from Locomation. Um, have a deeper look in, into the virtual merging unit and then talking about the substation server from Velotech and how to use it in, in that use cases. Um, at the end, we'll also highlight the path to a fully software defined substation and uh, look into some use cases. Edwin, over to you a little bit about Locomation. Yes, uh, thank you, Jos. I hope you can, uh, can hear me. Perfect. Just checking. Uh, yeah, so uh, Locomation was founded in uh, 1983 in, uh, in the Netherlands, in Enschede. And uh, in the last 40 years, uh, we, uh, we build a lot of experience in time sensitive and mission critical process bus automation technology. Uh, Locomation has proven to be the pioneer in uh, centralized protection and control substation automation with uh, the product called SAS Sensor. Uh, because uh, this 40 year period, um, we have uh, installed um, uh, over 200 SAS sensor systems worldwide, including in uh, the Netherlands and Sweden, United Kingdom and uh, China. So uh, this is a little bit about uh, Locomation. Over to you, Jos. Perfect. Thank you, Edwin. A few words about Velotech. So Velotech is a pioneer in industrial IoT and um, uh, industrial edge solutions. Um, we are founded in 1969 and located in Germany. Actually, we are quite close to the border of Netherlands and especially to Enkrede. So it's just 30 minutes away from Locomation. What we do is tailor-made solutions for industrial transformation, especially in um, industrial uh, um, environments. This includes especially substation automation systems, for example, for transmission and distribution grids, but also for high voltage direct current and fax applications. Our digital solutions um, support power grids um, and uh, their substations and secondary substations uh, in the process of the IT and OT convergence. Besides the devices and servers that we do where um, applications can run on, we also look um, into device management. Uh, we have a strong focus on IT and OT security uh, and also in cloud integration. Edwin, back to you about the challenges. Uh, yes, uh, the current situation in the uh, transport and distribution of electrical energy puts uh, TSOs and DSOs for uh, huge challenges. Uh, on the one hand, uh, the traditional top-down energy production and transport or, uh, and distribution has changed uh, to an increasing influx of uh, intermittent uh, renewable energy, for example, from uh, solar and uh, wind parks. While on the other hand, the increasing popularity of uh, electric vehicles and the energy transition, for example, in the Netherlands, but also other countries, uh, put this puts a higher strain on the, on the grid from both the generation side as well as the demand side. Uh, so TSOs and DSOs therefore need to know in more detail uh, the capacity of the grid. Uh, as 50% of the legacy substations do not support the, the digital, uh, digitalization needs uh, of the TSO and DSO. Uh, currently, this makes it uh, very difficult to use the electrical network in the most optimal way. Uh, we will not address uh, the expansion uh, of the electrical grid uh, on the primary side, 
uh, here. Uh, this is uh, also much needed, but uh, we want to address the extension or refurbishment of the secondary equipment and substations. Uh, apart from before mentioned uncertainty of the grid capacity, uh, energy companies also struggle to upgrade and expand uh, the secondary systems because of a shortage of financial and technical human resources. And in many substations, secondary equipment uh, do not reach their end of life yet, which means that uh, premature uh, renovating will destroy capital. So in short, uh, the energy sector needs to digitalize the grid with smart solutions uh, that, uh, that can be installed and maintained with uh, less personnel and should uh, also be future-proof. Locomation has developed uh, in, uh, innovative uh, solutions in the past, and uh, now we are on the, on the brink of presenting uh, yet another smart solution for substation automation. This is the virtual merging unit uh, based on the well-known 61850 standard that will revolutionize the way process information will be presented to the substation automation systems. Uh, but first I want to show you um, how the differences between a locomation SAS sensor uh, and the substations fitted with traditional IEDs uh, with merging units. So uh, what you see here is a schematic view of a, uh, a contemporary substation built with digital IEDs and merging units. Such a substation automation system contain many IEDs uh, to perform the various substation functions. And these IEDs get process information via the process bus. And they also communicate with GOOS and MMS over the process bus or station bus, uh, depending on the topology and design of the secondary systems. Uh, the next step. Thank you. So cell sensor, uh, has been developed over 15 years ago and is uh, operational in several countries uh, in over 200 substations, as I mentioned. Uh, so sensor is a CPC system, centralized protection and control. And one could say that it has virtualized the process bus and station bus, as well as much of the functionality present in current substations. However, SAS sensor is a proprietary solution and it's not very easy to integrate uh, with third party IEDs because it doesn't uh, talk sampled values or GOOS or MMS. Um, because we felt the need to connect to standards like 61850 and IEC 61869, uh, Locomation has redefined the substation automation from the ground up, beginning with the virtual merging unit. The next slide, please. Uh, the virtual merging unit uh, is a solution that is built on a simple, robust sensor that uh, is connected to a single software-defined merging unit, which is running on a commercially off-the-shelf industrial computer. The sensors do not need uh, configuration in most cases, and the virtual merging unit can publish uh, up to 30 sampled value streams for protection, measurement, metering, and other applications. Because the virtual merging unit is based on IEC 61850, the way to multi-vendor solutions is guaranteed. As you can see in the schematic uh, setup, the voltage and current interface modules called VIM and CIM, FIM and SIM, are connected to a commercially off-the-shelf network switch. And the interface modules uh, publish sampled value streams that are based on the IEC 61850 uh, sorry, uh, IEC 61869 standard. The virtual merging unit itself is running on a sub substation server, which is a, a substation hardened commercially off the shelf industrial computer. And the VMU software will provide the calibration and adjustment of the process data. The published sample value streams are then ready to be used by other third-party IEDs and uh, or future virtual applications that are running on the same substation server. Uh, you also see a BIM, BIM, which is a, a breaker interface module. 
Uh, this uh, interface module has several digital I.O. for controlling breakers and uh, monitoring breaker positions uh, and other digital uh, uh, I.O. The next version of this product will also be based on IEC 62850, uh, which will be Goose Messaging. The platform uh, will provide electricity companies a migration path to software-defined substations. Initially, maybe uh, by extending the, the functionality with a measurement application and in the future, moving towards a more complete centralized protection and control system. The extension can be done without uh, having to install additional hardware as the sensors and substation server are already in place. The next slide. So in short, we have a relatively simple, cost-effective and flexible way to implement the IEC 62850 process bus and station bus in existing substations. In the future, uh, the virtualization of substation functions offers extensible and upgrade, uh, uh, upgradable functionality. Uh, it supports uh, ultimate flexibility for bay replacements or extensions with third-party uh, IEC 62050 IEDs. And various migration paths towards a full software-defined substation. It's up to the DSO uh, or TSO in which way they want to build, refurbish, or extend their substations. The sampled value streams are configurable for uh, advanced measurement and monitoring, including uh, mainstream APIs towards uh, data analytics uh, applications. Uh, engineering and testing can be done through the IEC 62050 system configuration language, or better known SCL. And we Uh, amongst others, the ENCS security requirements. So this, that's it for this slide. Uh, over to you, Jos. Thank you, Edwin. Very interesting. So let's talk a little bit about the Bilotech substation server. First of all, it's a standardized um, x86 hardware platform, which is an Intel reference architecture. So it's very comparable um, to a standard soft, uh, server. But on, on the other hand, it meets the um, requirements of IC61850-3, which means EMC level and um, uh, the requirements for usage in power substations. It also meets the requirements of IEEE 1613, which includes vibrations, temperature, uh, shock, and so on. So that you have something that has, from the environmental specs, um, the same characteristics as uh, traditional IEDs. At the same time, it's powered with a very fast Intel Xeon CPU with four cores and eight threads. And um, next year, we will also have a new version, uh, which um, will have uh, 2.7 times that performance with eight cores and 16 threads. It can fit in a 19 inch rack. Um, and from the um, size, uh, the depth is, is not that large. So, uh, it can also directly fit into doors of, of a substation um, and so on. It's totally um, passive cooled and has no moving part at all. So this means it's um, pretty much maintenance free. Uh, you don't have to clean anything. You don't have to replace fans. Um, the SSDs have no moving parts. So it's a system which will work reliable and all the parts that might be changed for example, the power supply or uh, the SSD are hot swappable um, and can be accessed easily. In addition to uh, the robustness as, as a platform and to standardization, um, it's made for visualization, uh, which allows you to run multiple applications on it. Uh, you can also use it for containerization. So that means that you can have even more applications running on one of those substation servers. Um, for power substations that are battery backed up, um, we also support uh, 110 volt DC power supply to 20 volt DC power supply or standard AC power supplies. And there are two of those power supplies um, uh, which offers you redundant power input. Looking a little bit on, on the details of the back, 
So as mentioned, you see no fans at all. So there is a passive cooling. Um, on, on the left, you have uh, the power supplies that can be um, uh, swapped during operation. So you can replace one power supply in case of failure or if, if you have a different power input um, and uh, the system will continue running. Uh, we can extend the system with PCIe cards, which are standard computer cards. Uh, we offer a standard setup of cards, for example, a HSR PIP card, which you see they are installed. So you have hardware support for HSR and you have hardware support for PRP within your substation network. In addition to that, you can put um, additional cards with uh, additional LAN ports or serial ports or um, even a graphic card if, if needed. The system can have two um, independent displays. The next generation will have three so that you can also connect um, some kind of local HMI or, or those uh, use it for those applications. It comes with four gigabit Ethernet LAN ports. Also the next generation will have eight. So you can have even more applications running on it. And then uh, some standard USB ports and uh, serial ports for legacy equipment are also installed directly. If you're looking at uh, the server on, on the left, you see a picture where four servers are installed, uh, three servers are installed. Um, on, on one hand, we can support a Linux uh, real-time operating system, so that direct Linux is installed on the machine and um, can also uh, run the um, uh, virtual merging unit applications from localization. Uh, it comes with four gigabit Ethernet ports. And the gigabit Ethernet ports have PTP support, so we can um, real-time synchronize and, and make sure that we are also real-time capable. Um, and of course, uh, as, as mentioned before, there is a hardware-based HSR and PRP support, uh, which um, allows you to be very fast on PRP networks without um, pushing the resources of the server as well. Besides uh, the real-time Linux, we also can support other um, uh, um, uh, systems like Ubuntu Linux or a hypervisor from VMware like ESXi. can support real-time operating systems like Weeksworks or even cloud applications from AWS or um, Microsoft Azure. Um, or if you are very standard, it runs perfectly with Windows 10 or Windows Server. Okay, now we are coming back to you, Edwin, about the use case. Yes, uh, thank you. Well, definitely sounds... Uh, oh, I have a little hiccup. Okay. It uh, definitely sounds like a, a great uh, hardware for our platform, and we are also using your, your system, of course. Um, and, uh, it works very well. So can you show the first part? Thank you. So uh, how can we uh, digitalize an existing substation with the virtual merging unit? Um, uh, here we have a substation with some conventional protection relays, which are connected in a traditional way uh, to the primary process. And we have an RTU to provide access to the substation for uh, supervisory control and data acquisition uh, by a, re a remote control room. Uh, this situation still exists in many substations nowadays. Uh, the next part. Thank you. Uh, by, by adding Locomation's current and voltage interface modules uh, and a substation server, uh, like the one from Velotech, uh, we create a cost-effective and future-proof platform, which will uh, immediately make accurate process information available and opens the possibility um, for a station bus uh, as well. The next part, yes. Uh, the combination of existing secondary equipment with state-of-the-art uh, VMU platform will provide uh, immediately accurate process information to uh, new uh, IE6150 IEDs and future extensions of the substation become much easier. Even extending the substation with additional base and IEC6250 based IEDs will be less time consuming. The infrastructure is already present, working in parallel with the existing conventional relays. The big difference with the initial substation 
the network operators now have reliable and accurate process information, which will enable them to uh, utilize the grid more effectively. Also, maintenance personnel and analysts can profit from all the measurement data that uh, becomes available from the process bus. And uh, remember, the original protection and control functions are still in place and untouched uh, until you decide to uh, replace it with state-of-the-art protection and control functionality running on the substation server. Next slide. Perfect. Uh, I think I take this right. Yeah. Uh, so if we are talking about the evolution path towards a fully software-defined substation, um, we have on, on one hand uh, the hardware and uh, operating system, which is a real, uh, real time Linux operating system. And then we have some kind of, of containerization platform. And um, then on top, some uh, microservices. Here on top, uh, the first would be some kind of virtual merging unit um, or some virtual measurements. And um, if you're looking for new uh, functions, uh, there are could be some kind of additional functions. So on, on the left side, we have just two. On, on the right side, we have eight already. Um, and you can also add even more functions. So this could include RTU, this could include protection, this could include control uh, or power quality measurements. And those applications uh, can come, for example, from Locomation, uh, but they can also come from any third party because we are working on standardized um, process bus here, running on a standardized hardware with some kind of standardized containerized um, applications. So you can put a lot of uh, different applications um, from different vendors. For example, if you have proto uh, uh, um, protection algorithms from, from vendor A or N and B, you can also use them on the server. Perfect. Now it's time for questions. Um, thank you very much for listening. And I see that we have several questions already. Let me jump into it. Um, the first one, can you give examples of TSOs or DSOs that are currently exploring or even applying this? Uh, I think Edwin, this is a good question for you. Yeah, yeah we, we have uh, uh, several uh parties that we are in contact with um, that are um, uh, yeah, evaluating and trying out our platform. Uh, uh, so this means a substation server, for, from, uh, for example, from Velotech with, uh, with our um, merging unit and uh, sensors. Um, uh, one, the one is in the Netherlands, uh, Aliando, uh, we have uh, in France, we have RTE, and we, we are still um, talking to some other parties as well in Europe. Um, uh, I'm not sure if I can disclose all the information at the moment, but uh, I know uh, some, some are not a problem. So uh, yeah, they are um, uh, looking into this because it, uh, of the huge benefits that such a platform has. Uh, so they, they want to gain uh, some some knowledge and experience with it with you know, in real time uh, situations. Perfect, thank you. So another question: um, What's the difference between virtual merging unit and virtual measurements? So VMU and VMM. Yeah, so the, the VMU is really the basis of the uh, of the system. Eh? Uh, you need information from the from the process uh, in order to do any kind of substation functions. Eh? We talk about protection. Uh, we talk about um, uh, measurements. Uh, this is important that you have good and uh, and solid information from the process bus. So we um, redesigned our sensors that they talk. Um, 620 50 by themselves but uh, they can also go through a virtual merging unit where where we can remerge and uh, do um, uh, 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 how do you say that justification of uh, of the information and eh? we to, to do the calibration uh, so to say uh, for some in some cases this is necessary uh, because you need um, very accurate information for certain functions so the VMU is, uh, is, is doing this at the moment. The virtual measurement application, VMM, in this uh, picture, um, or in the previous picture, sorry, um, 
is uh, is a is a application that that uh, takes the virtual merging unit sampled value stream and calculates the the, the measurements that are needed for uh, SCADA systems and maintenance and and, and, and uh, analytics. So uh, the measurement application is uh, doing the calculations based on sampled value streams. Okay, perfect. So today there are a lot of questions for you. Yeah, I hope you have some questions <laughs> as well. <laughs> coming, coming to the next one. According to my understanding, each CT, so current transformer and BT, voltage transformer, has a merging unit. Using virtual merging unit, can we remove all the merging unit connected to current and voltage transformers? Uh, if I understand correctly, um, yeah, now uh, uh, many merging units uh, nowadays uh, that, that you can buy uh, are restricted to uh, a few, uh, uh, a few inputs. And yeah? they can only produce uh, one, two, maybe four uh, sampled value streams and that's it. Our VMU uh, is capable of uh, producing at least 30, uh, that's free zero, uh, but maybe even up to 40 uh, streams uh, in parallel. So you can have many uh, uh, current uh, interface, current sensors or voltage sensors in your system, and they all come all uh, together in the virtual merging unit. And the virtual merging unit will produce uh, all these uh, needed sampled value streams. Perfect, next one for you as well. Can you show more information about these SIM devices? Uh, more information about the SIM device. Yeah, well, what kind of information? There's so much to tell um, and so much to show, I think. I, I don't have something that I can show at the moment, uh, but um, uh, yeah, what, uh, what, what can I say about it? Um, uh, so, so probably we sent over the information afterwards about the SIM devices. Yeah, sure. That's uh, that's not a problem, of course. If we know the, the sender of the question, we will do this. Okay, then. Um, there is software or application need to install in a PC for virtual, also license required drivers requires. So um, I think it's uh, probably a question um, for the Maybe. software and application. <clears throat> Yeah, maybe I can, uh, this is not uh, really uh, explained in depth uh, in this, this presentation. Maybe we should do this uh, in the future. Uh, the, the, the platform uh, running on the, on the Velotech uh, uh, server, uh, the platform um, uh, actually implements um, a system uh, uh, where you can have a, uh, many virtualized functions of a substation. So in this case, we, we start with the virtual merging unit and a virtual measurement application uh, and in the future maybe virtual protection functions and uh, these applications communicate on the server on a virtual process bus and a virtual station bus so everything stays on the computer uh, still everything is based on IEC 621 and um, IEC uh, 61 uh, uh, but it's all running on one PC. If you want to have a redundancy, you install two PCs, no problem. Uh, uh, additional drivers and licenses. Um, no, there, there are no other drivers and licenses needed than, uh, of course, the applications that, uh, that you want to run on the, on the system. Okay, perfect, thank you. Another question. How many IDs can I replace with one substation server? Yeah, that's a good one. Uh, it depends on the situation and the requirements of the, the TSO, DSO. Um, in the future, it will be uh, possible to implement a full software-defined substation on a single server. Uh, I think it's also important to distinguish between IEDs and substation functions. Uh, um, a conventional IED may have many substation functions. Uh, in a software-defined substation, we better talk about substation functions. Uh, because there are no physical IEDs anymore. 
uh, of course, uh, there is a limit, uh, as always, uh, on the number of uh, substantial functions that you can run simultaneously on a single server. Uh, think about the number of processor cores and the memory uh, that you need. But uh, from our experience in the past with SAS sensor, we were uh, always able to run all substation functions on a single platform. And this was already possible uh, more than 10 years ago. So nowadays, processes and memory capabilities uh, have increased 10 or even 100 fold. So we don't see a real problem there. Yeah, maybe let me add something. So um, on, on the current uh, server that we have, we don't see any limitations on, on the numbers. And um, uh, next year, we'll release uh, even faster server, which will more than double uh, the resources available. So um, uh, probably there is, is no limitation uh, on that um, uh, available anymore in, in the future. Coming to the next one. Can I run Windows software on the server? Uh, I think that's one for me and a little bit for you. Uh, you start. So <laughs> <laughs> of course you can. So uh, there are different possibilities. One would be that you can directly run Windows 10 on the server and run standard applications. But this would not be the um, applications for virtual merging units. You can also run a hypervisor like VMware or Windows Server Hyper-V. So on VMware, you can run, of course, Windows Server software on, or, or um, Windows software as a virtual machine. And the same would work on, on um, uh, Hyper-V from Microsoft. Um, there are also the support for other um, uh, hypervisors that can then run the Windows software. If you have a Windows operating system, you can run any Windows software that you want. So this would work. And if you have a hypervisor that is real-time capable, you can run Windows software. And in parallel, you can run a second virtual machine with um, Linux and, and real-time Linux, uh, and then uh, work with a VMU from Locomation. You just need to make sure that you're real-time capable on, on, on the hypervisor as well. Okay, next one. Is there some substation size limitation due to number of data streams, or we could combine multiple servers to attend to any substation size? So, sorry, can you say that again? Uh, is there some substation size limitation due to number of data streams, I think in parallel, or we could combine multiple servers to attend any substation size? Yeah, of course, there are, there's always a limitation. Eh? Uh, nothing is uh, in, infinite. So um, uh, if you talk about sampled value streams, eh, uh, we know these, these take up some bandwidth uh, on, on the network. So. Uh, this also co uh, uh, completely depends on the topology of the of the system. Um, uh, so uh, uh, yeah, there's a limitation, but like like you said, uh, uh, if one uh, substation server is not uh, enough, you can have a second one, um, and they can commute with the the, the uh, a real process bus or real uh, uh, a non virtualized uh, process bus and station bus. Uh, with each other, uh, and, and IEC 62050 completely supports supports this this kind of topology. Uh, the, the free location of functions is is the the, the basis of IEC 62050. So, yeah, you can ex extend it with multiple servers if you need. If you have really big substations, uh, you can uh, use multiple servers, no problem. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Then the next one. If you would want to gain hands-on experiences, what would be the option for this? Uh, probably you take the first one on, on this. Yes. Um, yeah, like, we, uh, like, uh, like I said, uh, we, we are talking to the several parties uh, at the moment uh, uh, because they are really interested in our uh, solutions. And uh, we have created uh, some kind of um, package uh, where, um, uh, yeah, the the, the 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 party can can try uh, the, our solution and get uh, hands-on experience and knowledge about the system, and then do their own measurements if they want. Uh, so uh, yeah, this is possible. Um, so yeah, 
we, we have something um, uh, ready for that at the moment. Yeah. Also, Velotech is supporting um, any vendor or utility um, for, for testing and uh, discussion for migration. So if you want to visualize if it is um, process bus, but also station bus, uh, you can always get in touch with us and, and uh, we can work with you on it. Yeah, definitely. Okay, now uh, some commercial question. What is the difference in efficiency versus cost between a conventional solution and uh, the digital solution that you presented? Um... Yeah, that's very difficult to answer. Uh, I can only say uh, uh, that, uh, for example, a completely soft, software-defined substation, uh, where you have, for example, uh, not too big substation, you have one uh, uh, one server running the software. If you compare that to uh, multiple IEDs, uh, uh, the first thing you you will see is that you need more. Um, you have more boxes. Uh, you have more cables. You have more communication between these boxes. Uh, you probably need uh, a little bit more network switches, and all of this needs to be uh, uh, needs to be specified, needs to be designed, needs to be built, uh, needs to be maintained, needs to be updated. Uh, so, yeah, if you look at it, uh, it, it uh, having le less boxes is yeah only has benefits. Um, yeah, not to mention the wave of updating uh, equipment. Huh? Uh, if, if you have to update different uh, multi-vendor systems, you need uh, multiple tools uh, for for doing this. And uh, in a software-defined substation, yeah, you update applications. So this is, uh, uh, yeah, we design it. At least we design it to make it uh, as easy as possible for the uh, for the end user, and not difficult. You don't have to learn a lot of new. Uh, yeah, software packages to do uh, to do this. So this, yeah. If you, how do you translate this back in money? Um, I'm not going to say it's uh, three times cheaper or five times cheaper. Um, uh, but uh, yeah, if you think if you sheer sheer look at the 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 way the substation is uh, looks like, uh, yeah, you just have much less less boxes. So yeah, it must be cheaper. Okay, perfect. Then we have another one. Has the Locomation Virtual Merging Unit been validated with VMware's ESXi hypervisor on the Velotech substation server? I think we didn't do that yet. Um, uh, it, uh, it's, I'm not sure yet. I think it's, uh, the uh, testing it with, with uh, VMware is being done or has been done already. Okay, so, yeah, so we sure it, yeah. yeah, I was not sure if it was on a Willitech server, but um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, so we validate the MBS ESXi hypervisor, and, and with the recent version, you are also real time capable. Um, we also had a, a webinar together with um, uh, um, VMware, I think it's just two or three weeks ago, uh, where we also talked about the process bus virtualization. Um, I'm not sure if you have it anywhere productive together with this uh, locomation, but I believe it will work and, and we can validate it. Um, so probably can go into a discussion afterwards and see how we can create a solution for you and uh, based on, on a uh, ESXi uh, infrastructure. Mm -hmm. Okay. Perfect. Um, <clears throat> so next one. Uh, so far, we have seen process bus adoption going slow. What's your opinion on this? Let me yeah. take, the, <clears throat> or, or you take the first one. Yeah, I, I can give uh, uh, my my. I, I don't have all the knowledge, of course, uh, but I've uh, I've been uh, working in six to one fifty for almost twenty years now, and uh, the, the adoption has been yeah very slow, uh, so to say. Um, it's not that uh, everything is running now on on. Uh, on Six to one hundred fifty uh, process bus at the moment, and maybe this is because, um, um, yeah, uh, uh, the process bus can be can be used for several things. So you can do it for uh, uh, protection, uh, but you can also do it for measurement. So 
maybe uh, it's a good idea to start with uh, measuring uh, things first and let the protection uh, stay uh, in the traditional uh, way. Um, uh, also for, for um, existing substations, and this is what we also promote. Um, and w once this process bus, yeah, uh, has shown to be very uh, stable and um, and uh, reliable, uh, yeah, then you can can make the step to the next level, which is uh, protection. Uh, I, I think uh, a lot of TSOs, DSOs are still uh, anxious to to make this step. But uh, yeah, we have to move forward. Uh, uh, so uh, we have to also, uh, I think we, we have the task to show them that it can be reliable and uh, stable. And we will do. Perfect, yeah. What we are also seeing is um, that a lot of the substation designs that I recently see, um, there is process bus uh, included. Um, it is done with traditional IEDs, let's call it, or not traditional, it's, it's 62850 IEDs, I call them traditional. Um, and uh, with, with uh, uh, 6150 merging units. So this is something that is coming in and that is coming all over the world. So I don't even see any regional uh, restriction on this. Um, we have a lot of applications uh, in um, South America. We have them in Southeast Asia, in um, uh, Middle East, uh, Europe and, and uh, North America as well. So um, there are those things that are done and people are looking into also visualized protection and control. So for me, um, 61850 process bus is something that will, uh, or, or every new substation is, is using that nowadays. Every new design is using that and visualization will also um, be the next approach. So it's just the first movers are doing that. And um, this is ramping up and a uh, lot of discussions that I had recently are about this topic. Um, and it's uh, every day it's, it's getting more. Okay, here we have another question. What are the key benefits of the presented approach? You wanna start? Um... Yeah, I think I already explained a little bit uh, in my, my previous, uh, one of the previous answers. Um, so so uh, having um, a virtual merging unit and, and, and virtual applications and virtual functions in uh, on the, running on the substation server uh, means that you have uh, less boxes, uh, less configuration, less cables, less wires, less maintenance. Um, yeah, this this is this is a big uh, big advantage, uh, uh, and one one of the other big advantages is um, if you want to change or add something to your virtualized substation, you can do this completely uh, offsite off the grid uh, with a uh, yeah with digital twin. Huh? Uh, uh, so it's really a digital twin of the original uh, digital uh, solution. And you can test your functions uh, there. Uh, you can, can really e very easily make a, a, a digital copy of your substation functionality. Whereas in traditional systems, yeah, you cannot easily copy uh, uh, boxes. Huh? So you have to rebuild all these, these base, these fields uh, uh, in the lab if you want to test something new. And this is very, very time consuming and uh, uh, expensive. Uh, uh, not to say that it's very difficult to maintain all these different versions of, of uh, 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 software that are run in these boxes uh, up to date. So, yeah, it, it, it has a, it has a, it has huge benefits. Uh, yeah, I think I've nothing to add to to this. Uh, I believe it's the same. Uh, so it will reduce um, uh, cost. Uh, it will increase um, and uh, really make it possible to have innovation and flexibility. Um, and it will, of course, also increase the reliability of the full system, uh, which is also a very uh, important part of it, especially if you're building redundancy and, and, and good systems. It's just some kind of state-of-the-art architecture. Okay, and then there's another question. I could saw examples in cubicles. Physical modules would be also feasible to install in a substation yard, high temperatures. Um, 
for, for your modules. Uh, so, so the Vim and Sim, uh, could they be installed in the substation yard? In the yard, uh, it's ne near the... Uh, near the near primary the, equipment, I think. Um, no, at the moment, this is not foreseen. Um, uh, however, we, we have been talking uh, with one uh, vendor uh, who, uh, who was interested in uh, having this integrated in, um, in their equipment. So, uh, but uh, now, uh, very simple, the, the, the protection for, uh, for the module, for the sensors is, um, is, is, is not uh, water, for example, waterproof. Uh, so uh, you could not uh, mount it uh, in the yard uh, when it's raining. That would not okay. be a good idea. But if you have a cabinet in, in the yard, a small one? Uh, if, you have, um, if you have a cabinet that is uh, protecting uh, uh, enough uh, for, for dust and, and water, then it's possible, yes. Yeah, and it's, I think it's also done that it's mounted directly to the um, uh, primary equipment already. Um, and uh, um, it can withstand all the EMC levels and high temperatures. Uh, so it's just a matter of uh, dust and water, isn't it? Okay. Okay, perfect. For the substation computer, it's, it's something um, similar. So it has the same EMC and temperature levels as, as IEDs that it can withstand. Um, but of course, uh, it is not waterproof. Uh, it's typically not installed in, in the substation yard, but um, in, in the secondary uh, site where the equipment is installed. Um, but it could be. Uh, so, so there is no physical constraint except uh, that you need a cabinet to protect from water uh, to install it there. Okay, there was uh, again some clarification inside cabinets, of course. So yes, you can install it there. Perfect. Okay, um, I think we are at the end of the questions. Um, let me highlight a few things. We have a discussion uh, with Locomation and Rebo, which is an industrial I IoT security company, um, together and, and moderated from uh, Mandana White from Smart Grid Forms, who's hosting also the 61850 week uh, this October in, in Cardiff. This online event with Rebo and, and Locomation will be on 4th of October. So you'll get some invitation for that or get in contact with us uh, to get one. And then um, at uh, the second half of October, there's a 61850 week in Cardiff. Uh, also, Locomation will present their solutions and go into discussions, and Velotech is doing the same there as well. So I'm very excited to discuss with all the participants there. Me too. Thank you so much for your time. Talking to you um, soon, uh, listen to you soon, and going into the next discussions. I'm very excited for the next events, and you'll get some invitation for sure. Thank you so much. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye.